These DIY veggie patches turn backyards into mini farms. And this was the military's version of fast food, a beefy creamy concoction with a funny name. Today we take a look at 10 foods people ate during World War II to survive. Victory gardens became an essential part of American life if you wanted quality nutrition for your family. These gardens, also known as war gardens or food gardens for defense, were planted at private homes in public parks across the U.S. The government encouraged citizens to grow their own vegetables, fruits, and herbs to supplement their rations and help with the war effort. This initiative not only provided food, but also boosted morale by giving people a sense of contribution and empowerment. By growing their own food, Americans were able to reduce pressure on the public food supply and support the troops overseas. Around one-third of vegetables produced in the U.S. during the war came from these victory gardens. Spam, a canned meat product made by Hormel Foods Corporation, became very popular during World War II. It was introduced in 1937 and was made mainly from pork shoulder and ham. During the war, fresh meat was hard to get for soldiers, so Spam was a good alternative because it could be shipped easily and didn't spoil quickly. Soldiers and civilians alike ate Spam because it was affordable and could be used in many different meals. It was so important during the war that over 150 million pounds of Spam were bought by the military. Spam was jokingly called special army meat by American soldiers. Powdered eggs became a big part of the American diet during this era, both at home and for soldiers abroad. These eggs are fully dehydrated, making them lighter and easier to transport than fresh eggs. They were especially useful because they didn't need refrigeration and had a long shelf life. People used powdered eggs in various recipes, including baking and making scrambled eggs or omelets. The process of making powdered eggs was developed in the 1930s and became widespread during the war due to the need for durable, easy to transport food sources. Powdered eggs had a storage life of five to 10 years when stored without oxygen in a cool environment. During the war, when fresh apples were scarce and expensive, Americans got creative with their desserts and made what's known as mock apple pie. This pie didn't actually contain any apples. Instead, it used common crackers, which were soaked in a mixture of sugar, water, and spices like cinnamon and nutmeg. The soaked crackers mimicked the texture and flavor of apples when baked in a pie crust. This pie became popular because it allowed families to enjoy a sweet, apple-like dessert without using rationed or unavailable ingredients. Mock apple pie was so successful in mimicking the taste of the real thing that many people couldn't tell the difference between the two. A popular dish among American soldiers was cream chipped beef on toast, often jokingly called SOS, which stands for SHIT on a shingle. This meal consisted of thin slices of dried beef mixed in a creamy white sauce and served over toast. It was a staple in the military because it was easy and quick to prepare, nutritious and inexpensive to make in large quantities. The dish first appeared in the 1910 Manual for Army Cooks, showing its long history in military cuisine. Chipped beef on toast was not only a common meal in the military, but also became popular in American diners, especially in the mid-Atlantic region. The term shingle in military slang has been used for a slice of toast since around 1935. During the Great Depression, a unique cake called Depression Cake became popular in America. This cake was made without milk, sugar, butter, or eggs, which were either too expensive or hard to get at the time. Instead, people used ingredients like flour, raisins or prunes, spices and sometimes nuts. The cake was also known as war cake during World War I and II because it avoided ingredients that were scarce or reserved for soldiers. Radio shows and women's magazines helped spread the recipe, making it a well-known budget-friendly dessert. This cake's recipe dates back to at least the American Civil War, showing its long history of helping people through tough times. Coffee rationing began when German U-boats were attacking ships that brought coffee from Latin America. 
This made it hard to get coffee for everyone in the United States. In November 1942, the government started rationing coffee, allowing people to buy only a little bit at a time. Each person over 15 years old could get one pound of coffee every five to six weeks. Because of this, Americans made Roosevelt coffee by reusing old coffee grounds or mixing in things like chicory or postum, a wheat-based drink. President Franklin D. Roosevelt himself switched from coffee to milk to show his support for the rationing effort. Butter was hard to come by in the U.S. because of rationing, so people turned to oleomargarine, commonly known as margarine, as a substitute. Margarine was originally made from beef fat, but by the time of the war, it was mostly made from vegetable oils. This switch happened because there was a shortage of animal fats and vegetable oils were more available. People used margarine, just like butter, for cooking, baking, and as a spread on bread. It was different from butter because it was originally white, but later, yellow coloring was added to make it look more like butter. During the war, some states banned the sale of colored margarine, so people had to mix in yellow coloring themselves at home. During World War II, meat rationing in the U.S. led to some interesting changes in what people ate. Since meats like beef and chicken were often in short supply, Americans turned to less popular cuts, including organ meats. One such meat was tongue, which became a more common item on dinner tables. People learned to cook tongue in various ways, making it a practical and nutritious part of their diet. This shift was part of a broader push to support the war effort by conserving more desirable meat for soldiers. The U.S. government even launched a campaign to encourage consumption of organ meats, which they called variety meats, to help manage the meat rationing effectively. Chocolate bars became an important part of an American soldier's rations on the front lines. In 1940, the Hershey's Corporation developed a special emergency ration chocolate bar just for soldiers. These bars were tested in various climates, like the Philippines and Panama to make sure they could withstand extreme heat. After the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, these chocolate bars were even specially packaged to protect against poison gas. The most famous of these was the Tropical Bar, created in 1943 for troops in the Pacific Theater, designed to endure high temperatures. Throughout the wartime years, the bulk of Hershey's chocolate production was dedicated exclusively to the U.S. military. If you enjoyed this American Rewind video, go ahead and watch the next one. And remember to like and subscribe, it really helps a small channel.